RJ Gross, Upland Game Biologist, North Dakota Game and Fish. Right around 100, give or take one or two routes across the state, uh, spread across. We have four management districts that we use for pheasants. Um, you know, they're not necessarily the cardinal directions, but it's the northwest, the southwest, northeast, southeast. Um, spread out fairly evenly. So they're 20 mile routes, uh, usually through the best habitat that we can get. Um, we, there's 10 stops on each route. So every two miles you'll stop, get out, walk away from your vehicle, and you'll count the amount of crows, pheasant crows that you hear for two minutes. Uh, we repeat that 10 times, and we try to do them three times throughout the survey period, which is May 1st through June 10th. Uh, try and spread it out so we can get catch that peak uh, crowing, which is usually middle of May, uh, but sometimes you know it can be later, can be early, dep depending on on how the pheasants are acting. It's it's an index, you know, it's not a total population count. You know, we're just looking at the density of roosters, basically that came through the winter, that are entering that breeding population, the breeding season. Uh, we've been doing it since since the 80s, uh, you know, so we got a really good data set on it. And you know, the, the main thing people like to know is you know year to year, uh, things like that. How how roosters are coming into the breeding population. But it's really good, you know, we can you look at those long-term averages, you know, way back to when before CRP, through CRP, and now, you know, you're kind of coming down on the CRP, you're seeing how pheasants are reacting to things like that. Really good news this year, and you know, it's to be expected. Uh, so statewide average, pheasants were up 37%. You know, last year we were 14 crows per stop was the average, this year is right at 20. Um, one of the better ones we've ever had, and it's not surprising, Considering last year we had such great production, you know, it was upwards of 70% you know, increase in the amount of pheasants that we saw during our brood surveys that we do July and August. And then our winter that we had, you know, almost no snow, record temperatures. Um, you know, I didn't get my hands on any pheasants this year, but we were, we were doing turkey research, got hands on those. They were in very good body condition. So coming through, those hens should have really good body condition. Uh, the habitat is great, you know, it, 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 there was a little bit of worry we were going to be dry with no snow, but last fall it was really nice. We had a lot of, a lot of those timely rains. Um, the residual cover this year was great, you know, and you can look out now, we've been getting the rains, habitat looks great, you know, should be setting up for a, a good fall and, you know, just because this crowing counts are up, you know, there's still a lot of things that can happen. It's peak hatch right now, uh, you know, June 10th through the 17th is critical in North Dakota. Uh, as long as we don't get any of those major, you know, gully washing rain events, hail events, uh, we should have very good chick survival. Uh, the clutch size should be should be big, you know, like I said, those pheasants, the hens especially, should have really good body condition, should be able to have a full clutch. Um, there are places in the state that are not as good, you know, like I said, statewide it's up. Um, in the four, every one of the four districts it was an increase too. You know, we had increases from 26% all the way to 50%. For crowing counts, you know, I, I know people like to hear the percentages, but when you're dealing with smaller numbers, you know, like even, you know, we'll say the Northeast, you know, which isn't pheasant country, was up 52%, but, you know, that's increased from three to five, you know, things. So little numbers, a, a little bit is a, is a higher change. Um, but the areas, that have pheasants and have, grout, have grass, um, the dense, pheasant densities are very high. You know, like our northwest and our southwest were the key areas where the, the densities had the biggest increase. You know, I had some routes where the increase, you know, double from, from the year before. Um, and uh, that was to be expected again with the great production and the great winter that we had. But within those districts, you know, like we'll say, take like District 4, which we call the Southeast. There's kind of a line, you know, he split that district off. The, the far southeast five counties in the state looked Lemoore, Dickey, Sargent, uh, that area, pheasants are not doing well. Uh, all upland birds are not doing well just because, you know, we've lost the most amount of CRP down in that area and a lot of crop conversions, you know. Pheasants, they really key on agriculture, especially those small grains, you know, wheat, barley, oats, things like that. Down in that area, it's a lot of corn and soybeans, mix that with a lot of the grass losses that we've had, pheasants just aren't responding. You know, a lot of people remember our 
heydays of 2008, you know, where we harvested almost a million birds and you know, we had the most crowing counts on record, things like that. And it's, th this year it's very different, you know, so, so back in 2008, the Northwest, Southwest and Southeast all were around similar, you know, 30 crows per stop type of thing. Now, when you're looking at that, you know, that Southeast is right around, you know, 10, sometimes below 10 and your, your southwest and your northwest are the ones that are carrying that average. It was, it was a little bit surprising with how much of an increase it was, in, in the, especially in those areas where there were pheasants. I knew it would be up, but you know, it's a, it, it's a really good surprise. I'd rather be surprised with it being up as much as it, if it could be down. Um, you know, just, and, and our staff had comments, you know, even, you, you, th there's pheasants everywhere. You know, he said, you drive down a gravel road, you're probably gonna kick pheasants around. Um, so no, it was good that way, but you know, it's still, we're not, so people, you know, again, remember we had two droughts, basically two 100 year droughts in the last 10 years. So 2017 was a very bad one, um, especially in the Southwest where, you know, we had crowing count averages were in the 32s, 33s. Now there were about 30 or 29, 29 to 30. So we're almost back to what we were back then before the 2017 drought. So it took about 10 years. And you know, normally before that, we'd take five, six years for a pheasant, new pheasant population to come back. Granted, we had another drought within that time year, but it just goes to show when you don't have as much habitat in the winter, the weather doesn't cooperate, pheasants don't rebound as fast as, as we'd like them to. For the fall, it, we use that, those late summer roadside counts where we don't get to count just pheasants, we call, count all upland birds from July 20th all through August. That's what you know everyone's looking at. But you know, like I said, these crowing counts, it's a really good index of our density. And we can use, you know, we can create different things like our thunderstorm maps, like a lot of people are familiar with with ducks. We can do that, show where the highest densities are in North Dakota. But again, that doesn't mean that those areas are gonna be the best during the fall. You know, it, it, it is a conundrum, you know, they're thinking about it, you know, back in our heyday, we had over 3 million acres of CRP. Now we have, you know, a million or maybe a little bit less. But the places that have grass have pheasants. Makes sense because they're a grassland nesting bird. If you have grass, you're gonna have them. If you don't, well, they're not gonna be around. You know, these pheasants, where they're, where, where they're doing well now, we need to try and get more, more land into, or out of production and into grasslands. But the stars are aligning. It's, you know, everything should be in really good body condition. We had good production of everything last year. You look around now, it's fantastic habitat. Hopefully we're not gonna have any hail events in you know, the next, next couple weeks. Um, and then this fall should be outstanding.